Alright, welcome back. Last time, we declared war on the Commonwealth, again, to reclaim the Union. Again. However, unlike last time, I now actually have a 20-year-old on the throne. So, it's not like the Union's gonna last less than 20 years. Sure hope not this time. So I might actually have the time to be able to get the Commonwealth under control and actually maintain the Union beyond just a single ruler and repeated warfare. Because that really puts a damper on everything, having to go to war every time. Hopefully Relations Decay will get things back in order quickly, especially since I've changed my trading policy to establishing communities. And since the Commonwealth is trading in Bruce land, getting quite a bit of... It will help there, as well as with any other countries trading in the Bruce land node. So, how about we go ahead and get started. Right, swivel cannons. Swivel cannons allow an artillery to react more quickly on the battlefield, making them more, much more useful. Okay. Sure. Leather guns. Hopefully also reducing the number of local fortifications sitting around. Hopefully. I guess we should also be in our slum starting to build itself up as a decent city, isn't it? It's got that working too. Yeah. I can't afford to do any more. Not manpower, not ducats. Yeah. Yes, game one legitimacy. Yeah, that's something better. I was half hoping it'd be something interesting. Like, well, meritocracy. Is here actually. And it's reaching Persia now. Uh, I can get a better view of it from here. Meritocracy, there we go. Is entering Shirvan? Persia. I have embraced it by now. Yes. And it's actually spreading into Anatolia. As well as Egypt. So, well, the rest of the Levant as well. And Oman. And the Golden Horn is at least getting it. But I don't think they're at the point yet where they can embrace it. Could be wrong though. Nope, not yet. It's 
expansion east. Huh. So was this the thing? This is, I can't tell where these really are. I think they're all over here, though, which is not something I need. I'm not looking to expand in this direction, I'm looking to expand down here. Mercator projection. Advances in mathematics and navigation enabled Flemish cartographer Geratus Mercator Mercator uh, to make a map using rum lines. Lines which represent constant course. Although this distorted the shape of the Earth, it made navigating a ship much easier. First invented in 1569, Mercator maps were adopted over the following decades. Military enthusiasm. Our nation is full of enthusiastic men willing to work, willing to fight for our nation. They said, for, for every fallen man, two arise to cover their place. Victory is ours. Grand army. It's so grand. Almost all our is a rival. Because it's gonna get eclipsed in mumbles, huh? I love the eclipse of me somehow. That means one thing, I should revoke the embargo. So I don't need it. Yep, eclipse mumbles. Yeah, third rank great power. On the other hand, that's probably because of all my subjects. My own development was only in 1525. So I actually have less direct LL than my Bengal down here. But look at their size. This is all that they have. This light blue feather. Well, hey, Sean Confederacy. And the Muslim Bayitaya is dying. Sad. It was glorious while it lasted. Ah, oh, Board of Admiralty. The Lord Admiral was an appointed position by the ruler, usually during times of war. A truly professional navy called for its admirals to be commissioned officers. The Board of Admiralty replaced this earlier system with a group of Lords Commissioner who sat on the board and decided promotions. That. Yeah, they're going to save peace. I'd like to actually do something, but. Oh, uh, 99% war score now. Alright, everyone, we're heading home. Yeah, yeah, that. 
Yes. You two even have to cheat off the run. No, I would prefer to make my own peace deal, thank you very much. And some ducats, and there we go. Tame the steps, and subjugate Ostrakhan. This is affected us, I'll play the card audio, right? It doesn't look like it. Oh well, they have enough dev now to definitely take Tartar culture as their own, so there's at least that. I can just take everything. Uh, I shouldn't do this, I'd much rather have East Dawn as a state. And I finally have full control over this province too now. The population is definitely big enough to help with to get a customs house in place. There we go. I can actually core one of these provinces. Really? Well, that probably has to do with unrest production, does it? Yeah. Oh wait, no. Control by barriers, right? The Burger Lightning travels don't like me at all uh, that much. So I can go ahead and core the old capital of the Golden Horde. Sarai Al Jadid. Truce expired, so Commonwealth can now start to look for people to support their independence. If they actually want an independence. For the moment, actually, I could just start off support loyalists. Get 10 duck extra ducats per month again. But they're still fine. And they've actually started to trust me now. A little bit. Yeah, historical rivals in base game is actually really debilitating. Because it raises, it lowers uh, opinion by, I think, 50. I'm not sure, actually. I don't remember the opinion modifier, but I do remember the modifier delivery to desire. It raises it by 50%, which is a lot. However, in M&T, the opinion modifier is just a negative 25. Right there, historical rebel, negative 25. And it just raises liberty desire by 10%, which all in all isn't that bad. What's interesting is that the Commonwealth sees me as a historical rival, however, I see I don't see them that way. What's funny is that at the start of the game, Poland saw me as a historical rival. I, however, saw Lithuania as a historical rival. And I think Lithuania then saw the Teutonic Order as a historical rival, and then the Teutons. And maybe also, well, definitely saw Poland as a historical rival. Maybe they also... Poland maybe also saw the Teutons as that, but I don't think so. I don't quite remember. All I know for sure is how, the, how it was directed towards me. And by me. That's probably... No, Petition of Right. Admin tech it up. In sixteen twenty eight the petition of right established the legality the illegality of taxation without the consent of the Parliament in England. This seemingly insignificant act nevertheless set the incredible precedent of limiting royal authority. I now also have plus two states. Oh yeah, I might as well get an East Neeper. 
especially since I've had two more states to work with now. Looks like I can take Astrakhan as a state as well. As well as Eastern. I have already taken this as a state. Introduce air, sure. Man, this is just a lot of useful stuff, isn't it? Except maybe the diplomat. be moving my focus off of Diplo points. I'm actually ca almost caught up by this point. I'm rapidly gaining Diplo tech. I think I was doing this rate of about 4 per year by that point. No, one every 4 years, not 4 per year. 4 per year, per year would catapult me all the way up to right there at current in a couple years. Global trade finally arrived. Wow. Just took until 1650. Anyway, military tech advance. Line infantry. Cheaper, deadlier guns meant that trained musketeers could often keep enemies at bay. This reduces the need for hand-to-hand -hand soldiers to protect them, allowing modern armies to increase the proportion of muskets to pipes, pikes, in their armies to a one-to-one -one ratio. As this happened, new line tactics were developed to take advantage of the new offensive capabilities of the army. Soldiers trained to fire simultaneously against the same target, sending a deadly volley of lead at the enemy. These are about the same. One's just slightly more offensive in shock and morale than the other. Platoon fire musketeers. Since I'm mostly fighting against enemies that are of lower attack than me, at least military-wise, isn't it great to have such a military advantage? I'll take pips with... I'll take greater attack pips. Offensive pips. Raises damage capability. Coldest period of the Middle Ice Age. Yeah. Anyway, the Quadrant. In 1631, Pierre Venier invented the Quadrant, a device that could calculate angles accurately to one minute apart. Uh, well, I have to know what that means. This level of accuracy gave a line of position within a monocle mile of the navigator's actual position making both travel and maps even more accurate than before. By the way, what a minute means. Uh, so, you know how the circle has 360 degrees? Every degree has 60 minutes. That's really about it. You can also subdivide these minutes into 60 seconds. Arc seconds. They, it, the Name is the preferred name is arc minutes and arc seconds in order to specify. Yeah, but I should just get used to it. Anyway, I like how this Finland is stretching. Another monastic town. That's all I need to see. Mine it. So I'm getting it at a point one seven per month, so we'll be here in 1698, assuming nothing changes. I'm going to assume that something will change, because I'm pretty sure it's going to go a little bit faster in other places. Let's see. Toledo is going to be a lot closer. It also has the art center. Barcelona. This province is also 1669. Yeah, I figure as it spreads around, it's going to speed up. Oh, 
Okay, this one is actually really good here, because... Yeesh! Well, education level A. That's what I can do to you. Plus, it's a regional art that I'm going to enter. So it's going to get quite the spread. But yeah, I'm going to hit my eyes should be on here. Because, you know, that's getting it faster than a tomato of all places. Or Valencia. It's gonna get even faster. Yeah. Besides, there's also the fact that as stuff moves around, these other centers will also get them faster themselves. I also am going to need globalized trade, though, for more specific reasons that I get many factories. It's gonna take 25 years, though. I still don't really get it because it's certainly something I could spawn on my globalized trade. Globalized trade required stuff like colony. Trade companies. Yeah. Super helpful. So I'm sorry to see what's going on. Okay, um, yeah. Alright, back to the rest of the world. I managed to conquer these provinces from the Golden War. These five, and I also granted these two to my subject state. Yippee. Finland has almost finished colonizing. Spain has completely finished with their colonizing. Nice stretchy name. Perm is continuing to colonize. It's the Euro now is colored in. Golden Horde also seems to be colonizing, although they're having trouble keeping it together. I mean, Sibir used to be all their territories, including some of the colonized stuff. Yeah. Also, this is on. Yeah, this is actually the first episode where I didn't end up at war with the Commonwealth. Freaky. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Good, I'm not doing this overly prematurely. I think there was a phrase there was an hour left. There was an entire hour left. I was my time wrong. Anyway. Additionally just another decade and a half left and the Union will actually be stable with the Commonwealth and I can eventually annex them. Which I will probably eventually do, although I'm saying this now with vassals. Eventually I'll annex them. At some point, some time, some place. Lit. What is this called? No, no, no. Anyway, see you again next time. Until then.